Uh, we have talked about sliding mode control for its uh, system with two states. Uh, it is quite uh, simple. We define a sliding surface, and uh, if uh, trajectories are on this sliding surface uh, without application of any control, uh, system will converge to the equilibrium point and dynamics of the system on the sliding surface. Uh, those are independent <laughs> of the nonlinearities. On the sliding surface, these dynamics are independent of nonlinearities. If uh, nonlinearities are not exactly known, still you can see that on the sliding surface it will converge to the equilibrium point. If the trajectories are not on the sliding surface, then we apply this control law. This control law will bring any initial condition to the sliding surface. And since this beta is an upper bound on these nonlinear functions, so even if there, these are not exactly known, but upper bound on this is known, still this uh, starting mode control uh, will work. In today's lecture, we shall talk about more general system given by uh, these uh, state uh, equations. Here we make uh, a few assumptions. The first assumption is that these functions uh, are sufficiently smooth, that is their derivatives exist because we shall need to uh, compute their derivatives, so these derivatives must exist. This is first assumption. Second assumption is this, this, uh, this thing, delta of x, which is an uncertainty in the system. This is piecewise continuous and smooth in this. That is derivative of this with respect to these exist and it is piecewise continuous. What is piecewise continuous function? For example, this uh, function, uh, this function is, there is a discontinuity over here, but otherwise it is continuous. So such functions are called piecewise continuous functions. Here is another assumption that these functions S, V, and E, these are known to us. And the uh, rest of uh, these things, that is G of X, can be uncertain. Delta is also uh, uncertain, can be uncertain. Further assumption is that this matrix, G of X, is a diagonal matrix uh, with uh, all positive entries on the diagonal. That is G I of X is greater than 0. Another assumption is that f of 0 is equal to 0. Although these assumptions uh, uh, look uh, a bit restrictive, but these are not uh, too much restrictive. For example, uh, this uh, requirement that is uh, this is diagonal can be uh, uh, satisfied by suitable selection of E and B. Furthermore, this assumption that B and E are known that can also be satisfied because this product over our product we can collect the uncertain terms over here and then the rest of the things are known. Another uh, assumption is that there exists a diffeomorphism uh, diffeomorphism uh, which satisfies this condition. So this is a diffeomorphism diffeomorphism state transformation uh, which satisfies this condition. So these are a few assumptions. Uh, if we apply this state transformation, this system represented in new state variables will be converted into this particular form. So if you uh, use those, that state uh, transformation, this nonlinear system will be described in this particular form. It is uh, slightly more general than the form which we consider in input-output linearization. Uh, you have already learned how we can utilize uh, that, uh, how we can find uh, the state transformation which will result into input-output linearization. Even this is a little bit more general than that particular form which we called normal form. This form is called a regular form. So if this system is, a system is in this form, for this particular system, we define a sliding surface. Sliding surface is defined in uh, something uh, in a way similar to this one. That is, we define sliding surface beta minus phi of eta that is equal to zero. This phi of eta 
is a function of this first stage. So uh, how uh, how do you think uh, how we should uh, select this phi of eta just uh, by comparing it with this particular system? Uh, if I rewrite uh, this thing, uh, this is uh, written in this way. Here, just I have swapped the variables. So how should we select a over here? How a was selected? A was selected such that when this uh, substituted over here, these dynamics are stable. So over here, how we should select uh, this phi of uh, eta? How should we select this phi of eta? Such that eta dot, which is equal to f a of eta, and here we have uh, phi of zeta equal to phi of eta. So phi of eta. So this phi of eta should be selected such that these dynamics are asymptotically stable. This should be selected such that these dynamics are asymptotically stable. So what will happen on the sliding surface? On the sliding surface, you have appropriately selected this function. Therefore, these dynamics are asymptotically stable. Since eta is asymptotically stable, what about zeta? Zeta will also converge to the equilibrium point. So on this sliding surface, on this sliding surface, the trajectories will automatically converge to the equilibrium point. However, how to select uh, the control law that will bring any initial condition to the, uh, uh, the sliding surface. How we did it for the case of uh, this uh, sliding mode control? We had in that case found the dynamics of S dot uh, and then the control law was selected. So what is S dot in this case? zeta dot minus uh, partial phi over partial eta into eta dot. So this is quite similar to the strategy that we followed over here. We found the derivative s dot. The only difference is here s was what was uh, uh, the dimension of this uh, state. This state vector was what is dimension of x1. This was a single state. So S is a single state. Here, what is S? What is dimension of this vector? This is a vector zeta. So dimension of S is the same as dimension of this vector zeta. So here we have multiple states. So if you substitute these things, uh, then it is equal to this is S dot. Uh, and then we select this control law. It is quite similar to this control law. Here was some continuous function which depended upon the uh, nominal model. This part was depending upon the nominal model and there was a discontinuous part. So again, in a similar way, we have uh, a part which depends upon the nominal model and uh, this uh, which is uh, uh, discontinuous and will depend upon uncertain terms. Here we have also really assumed that f is known exactly known. So this fb and fa, this fa and fb, these came out from this f. So these are also exactly known. Uh, and you can see that there is no uncertain term over here. Here l of x, oh, what is l of x? l of x can be taken to be equal to uh, g hat of x, the nominal model of uh, this thing, if uh, we know the nominal model of this. If we know this nominal value of this g, then it can be taken to be g hat uh, inverse, g hat inverse. And if nominal model is not known, then it can be simply taken as zero. So what will this control law ensure? What had it ensured for this case? It had ensured that any initial trajectory will finally converge to the sliding surface. So we need to prove that this control law will also ensure any initial condition to converge to this sliding surface. So that we need to ensure. So how we can ensure that? 
Uh, we have selected this controller. If we substitute this control over here, then what will be S dot? S dot is, I just omit the argument, uh, this thing. So this E is cancelled with this E, inverse. So we have, what is the structure of G? Diagonal. So this will be something, this plus G1, V1, G2, V2, up to G0, V0. This G is diagonal and this uh, is vector. So if you multiply that, you get over here. This whole thing, uh, this thing is some function of x, p and uh, v. We have this control now. We have substituted it over here and then we have these state equations. To simplify the things, it is quite complex expression. So we take each state. So s i dot, what is s i dot? Uh, so what is this thing? Delta, what is this thing? Delta. This is a vector. Delta is a vector. Yes. Because this left hand side is vector. This is also vector. So it's i -th component, delta i of p x u and then g i v i that is s i dot is it clear yeah. so now we have i -th state for this particular i -th state we define uh, the uh, this thing v i the candidate Lyapunov function to be equal to 1 by 2 s i square s i is a scalar that is the i -th state of this s so this is given by this expression. Uh, is it clear? Although it looks complex, but if we are proceeding in the same way. We have this system, we define sliding surface, we sliding, define sliding surface, phi of eta is selected such that these dynamics, these are stable, asymptotically stable, just like the case over here. We have selected this A multiplied by X such that this uh, dynamics were asymptotically stable and then uh, we defined a control law which brought any initial trajectory to the sliding surface we defined a control law so with this uh, vi dot vi dot is equal to si into si dot uh, which is equal to uh, we have substituted si dot from this expression over here. So SI into GI VI plus SI into delta I. So this is less than or equal to uh, here what is delta? Delta is, delta I is this thing that was over here the ith element of the, this vector and uh, we found we find the upper bound on this ith element and that upper bound is uh, given by it is does it look uh, similar to the one uh, here uh, we had uh, this thing and this upper bound was determined we have uh, this thing and this upper bound is determined the only difference uh, is over here, here as the vector. And then delta is replaced by an upper bound on delta. Upper bound on delta. So, so if we take vi, this is capital vi, what is this capital vi? Do not confuse this capital vi with this small vi. What is difference? This is candidate Lyapunov function. This is new control equation. If you take this vi, small vi, to be equal to data of x is upper bound on row of x, similar to that case over there, there is slightly a difference. Here, in this k0, we shall talk about this k0 as well. So if you select this vi, then this uh, capital vi, this will come out to be less than or equal to here we have defined this control law uh, 
uh, it's uh, everything else is known except this V. How to find V? This uh, is a small V vector and its ith component. This is capital V, which is the Lyapunov candidate function. This is small v. Its ith component is selected in this way. It will ensure this thing. What is the meaning of this thing? This is negative definite. That is, any initial trajectory will converge to the starting surface. So, how would you summarize all this discussion? For this nonlinear system, uh, we shall find a state transformation which will bring it into this form. Once we have the system in this particular form, we shall define this sliding surface. Here, phi of eta will be selected such that these dynamics are asymptotically stable. Quite similar to the situation over here, we have selected this uh, phi of x1 such that these dynamics were asymptotically stable. Then we define this control law. Uh, so if trajectories are not on the sliding surface, we can show by this complex procedure that any trajectory will bring uh, will be brought to the sliding surface by this control law. So other than that particular proof, concept is very simple. Define sliding surface, select this control law. So that's all the sliding mode control.